Hi. So this is the next room over in the basement next to the family room. And it used to be our storage room. And we, we sort of moved all the stuff. We, we condensed and got rid of a lot of the stuff that was in this room. And we moved what was left into the room behind the TV in the family room, which is just that way. So what we want to do is finish this room off and make it a place to kind of store and to work on projects. One of the big things I need to do is to add a soffit over the duct work in the ceiling. There, there's some ducts that kind of hang down and I want to build a soffit in the ceiling to kind of cover that. And we, we want to put in new lighting and recover the walls and then build some workstations and storage in this room. And because this room has no windows, <laughs> We want to make it really bright. So I think we're going to do white everywhere and lots of lighting. So it'll be a very bright, airy space. That's the plan at the moment. <laughs> the first thing to do is to work on that soffit to cover up the ductwork. It didn't need to be very big and I wanted to preserve the ceiling height as much as I could. So I didn't need to make the structure of the soffit very thick. So I ripped some two by fours down to two by twos. I can make the structure of the soffit out of these two by two sticks. My idea was to make a vertical piece on the front side of the ductwork. This vertical piece would act sort of like a, a very short stud wall. And it would hang down from the underside of the joists of the ceiling. I'm making a nine inch tall stud wall, basically. <laughs> this will attach to the bottom of the ceiling joists. I can then attach the joists of the bottom of the soffit to the bottom of this piece. I can use my panel lift to hold it in place while I get it adjusted and positioned exactly where I want it. Then I can attach it with screws. The width of the space is a, a little bit more than 14 feet. So eight foot two by fours didn't quite make it. So I had to make this piece in two sections, but that wasn't a big deal. And in a way that made it easier. I spent a lot of time getting it positioned exactly right. Then I could use screws to attach it. I attached a little piece of blocking at the seam between the two pieces, just to sort of hold them together. Probably didn't really need to do this, but it helped keep everything straight. I made a similar piece at the back of the soffit. As the back of the space is the concrete foundation wall, and that's more difficult to attach things to. I made the thickness of these vertical pieces so that I could attach the structure to the soffit to the face at the front of the soffit and to the bottom of the vertical piece at the back of the soffit. So the height difference was the thickness of the soffit structure. Once the two vertical sections were in, I could just add the soffit structure pieces. As I used two by two strips to hold the ceiling of the, of the soffit, these had a little bit of flex to them, which probably would have been okay, but I had an idea of hanging the center of these two by two strips to the joists above through a very small space in the ductwork. It's a little bit like hanging a ceiling. I cut some metal straps and I carefully attached one end of the strap to the underside of the joists above through the slot between the two ducts. Then I could attach the other end of the strap to the middle of the soffit structure. And this worked really well. There won't be very much flex going up. It'll all be going down. 
I did put in new lighting. I added the junction boxes for that. What's kind of nice with the new LED lighting is you can do something that looks like a can light, but there's no can anymore as the, the light can now be very thin. So you don't need the big bulky box and cylinder up above the light. I also added a little bit of insulation. This isn't super necessary as this is an internal floor in the house, but hopefully it'll, it'll help a little bit. It wasn't very much work to put in a couple of joist runs. I can start working on the ceiling panels now. We used quarter inch plywood for the ceiling and half inch plywood for the walls. The soffit worked out where I could cut an eight foot sheet of plywood and the longer section is the ceiling of the soffit and the shorter section is enough length for the vertical section of the soffit. My idea originally for the lights was to cut the six inch hole that the lights need with a six inch hole cutting bit. And I have a, a slower running drill and I thought this would be a really good idea. <laughs> but because the lights were sort of in the, the middle of the panel and I was doing this on the floor, it really wasn't working. Even being very careful with it, it wouldn't cut very well. So I ended up just going back to my jigsaw and cutting the hole out for the lights that way. There's a piece of trim on the light, so the, the hole doesn't have to be neat and perfect. As I started to put the paneling up, I found that there were lots of spots where I needed little bits of blocking. This end of the soffit needed a piece right at the wall in the soffit, just to give some support to the edge of the panel. One thing that was a little easier was that because the lights weren't set in their location, I could just drill the hole where I wanted the light to be and it was in the right place. And the light will go in later. And I attached the ceiling panels with staples. I hope I don't have to get into the ceiling at any point. <laughs> So with later lights, I used a compass to draw the circle that I needed, then cut out the hole with the jigsaw. If you're careful with this quarter inch plywood, you can use the jigsaw to sort of self drill the starting hole and just cut into the material and then cut the hole out for the light. With the half inch wall paneling, I used a drill and drilled the hole to get the hole started. It worked with the jigsaw, but it, it, was, it was difficult to go through half an inch of plywood. And I can continue putting the panels up. And I had to find where the supports were in the middle. So the panel lift isn't so much helpful that it lifts the piece into place, it's that it holds it in the right location while you put the fasteners in. That's what makes it really helpful. I can start to put the vertical panels in on the soffit. My outlets that I put in the soffit ended up at the seams, so I just had to cut out a little notch for those. And more light cutting. I can start working on the main section of the ceiling, or the higher section of the ceiling, I guess. I had three full 4x8 sheets, then some shorter pieces at the end. So at this point, I have all of the big pieces in the ceiling up, and I need to do the edges, which are some smaller, more finicky pieces that need to be fit a little bit better. I decided I was going to use some trim in this room, so I didn't have to be perfect with the seams, although there were still little bits and little parts that needed to be fit into place. This is a little cutout for one of the wall studs is just slightly out of plane with the other wall studs. <laughs> so I cut a little notch out of the corner and then it fit. And did the longer 
edge. Then I started working on the wall. It turned out that the ceiling height in this room is just less than eight feet. So I had to cut down all of the sheets of plywood by about an inch and a half. <laughs> and I had to cut out holes for the outlets. I found after doing this a couple of times, it made sense to cut these openings for the outlets just a little bit small as I would always be off by a little bit. And if I cut it a little bit small, there'd be a side that would be perfect and a side that needed to get a little bit bigger instead of a side that was perfect and a side that was too big. And then I'm stuck because it's too big. <laughs> Once I had a smaller hole cut, I could then see what needed to be added to the hole and cut off a little bit more. As the hole doesn't have to be perfect or be covered by a cover plate, it just needs to be about the right size and in the right location. So after working on a couple of wall panels, I decided I should work on the concrete foundation wall. Originally, we were just gonna paint this, but in looking at it closer, it had a lot of variability in its texture. <laughs> Mostly there was a, a big section in the middle where there had been a pegboard attached to the wall. And in that section, they hadn't plastered it a little bit. So it was different. And I think when, when it was painted, that was gonna get accentuated. So I decided it'd be fairly easy to just coat this with plaster and make it just a little smoother and a little more even across the whole surface. So I got some plaster that you add water to and I started with a square bucket without thinking about it and that wasn't really the best idea. The drill mixer works better with a round bucket without corners. And I did a quick, thick first coat. Someone in the past had done a sort of rough scratch coat on this wall. So I was just doing more coats, <laughs> but it went pretty fast. It's almost easier when it's rougher as there, there's more to work with. But you can see that the wall is much more even already. And I had a little extra, so I kind of went over where I'd gone earlier. So I did three, maybe four coats in total. I would do a coat, let it dry for a day, and then do another coat. I did find the corner that I had was going to be kind of rough, so I got a corner bead to put on that, which almost makes it too straight, but it does kind of match the rest of the room better now. I got the kind of corner bead that you don't need to attach with screws or nails as it's a concrete wall. So you just kind of mud it in place and that holds it. And then I did another coat, or this might be the third coat, but it's starting to look really even now. <laughs> I can get back to working on the walls. This is cutting another panel to the right height, just cutting off a little bit off the end. And I think this is the last panel going into place. Mostly what I wanted to get perfect on these was the seam between the panels as I wasn't gonna have any trim covering the seams. I didn't care about the edges so much, it was the seam between the panels. And I had one last piece of ceiling panel to go up. I should have done the plastering before I did any of the paneling. And a panel over the door. While I was working on the electrical boxes in this section, I noticed that there was air being drawn into the storage room that's behind that panel. And this new craft room doesn't have any supply or return vents. So to get a little bit better air circulation, I cut a vent into this wall so air can get pulled into the storage room and into the air return that's in the storage room ceiling. So hopefully this will help circulate the air in this room. 
I just drew some lines and had the CNC follow those lines. So it's just the thickness of the half inch router bit. And I trimmed the corner of the soffit as the panels I left just a little bit long. Then it was time to paint. I'm not a big fan of painting wood, <laughs> but we wanted a really bright light space. So I painted the plywood panels. I painted the little vent first as it was sort of the hardest. <laughs> Then I did all of the edging in the room, basically where the roller won't reach. Then I could get the roller out and start to do the walls. I did this one small section of wall and then remembered I really want to do the ceilings first. So I started working on the ceilings. Under the soffit, it's just low enough where I don't need the pole attached to the roller. Whereas the main part of the ceiling, it's just high enough where I need the pole on the roller. <laughs> so it's sort of very different painting the underside of the soffit and painting the higher section of the ceiling. I tend to go slow and methodical with the roller, trying to get the best surface possible with the, with the thinnest layer of paint and not getting any paint spray. <laughs> it all went fine without any problems, although it, it still took, I think about two hours to do a coat in this room. It definitely got a lot brighter with the white. Now that it's painted, I can start working on the trim. I got a big piece of poplar. It's not too expensive and it takes paint well. So I cut that to the length I was going to need and jointed and planed it. Then I could cut this into strips. I was just going to keep it simple and do rectangular pieces of trim. Nothing fancy. I just cut this into lots and lots of strips. I figured the first coat on the trim I would do before I put it up as it would be a little bit easier to paint this way. Originally, we had wanted to do horizontal beadboard for the walls. And I realized what that actually looked like was a French cleat system. I know I've done French cleats all over our house, but thinking about it more and more, it made sense to do a French cleat system in the craft room then hang all of the storage systems and the work surfaces off of that French cleat system. So the idea now is to cover the wooden sections of the walls with a French cleat pattern. So I'm cutting out the French cleats, which are basically a strip of wood with a 45 degree angle on, on the top side. trim down that sharp corner of the 45 degree angle and I cut some strips at the same width that don't have the angle and those will be the system right at the ceiling where I don't need the angle. The thought was to make that French cleat system pattern cover the walls and go all the way up to the ceiling and the top piece would sort of be the piece of trim at the ceiling. Once I put that wider piece around the ceiling, I realized I was going to need a smaller secondary piece of trim because the ceiling's not perfectly flat. So I put a piece of trim around the ceiling edge as well. And on the main part of the ceiling, I was going to put trim over the seams in the panels. So I did that as well. Then I could put the lights up, finally. And they just get plugged into the junction box and put into the hole. And they work. <laughs> so for the cleats, I cut two two by fours at the same length and I could put the first cleat on those two by fours 
and attach that first cleat to the wall. Then I made some spacers that will hold up the cleats above that first cleat. I was gonna let the screws show on the cleats, but I did wanna make them look like they were, were part of a system. So I put them all in the same place on each cleat and they sort of follow the studs in the wall behind the cleats. So the screws for the cleats actually hold the plywood and the cleat to the studs. My spacers were difficult to get out sometimes. <laughs> so then it was just a matter of going through the system and putting all the cleats up. There were three sets of eight foot cleats, then two sets of shorter sections by the concrete foundation wall. The transition between the wood paneled wall and the concrete wall on the east side, which I guess would be on the right side if you're looking into the room, needed a piece of trim with a little cutout to take up the space of the paneled wall. I started to cut that and realized my fins on my faceplate were going to be in the way. <laughs> so I had to put a different faceplate in. So the, the paneled wall and the concrete wall are almost in the same plane, but there's, there's a little bit of a difference. So this piece of trim covers up that difference and makes a, a cleaner transition. Then there's a series of shorter cleats at that end. On the other side, I used my height spacer for the cleats as the trim. So I worked the spacing of the cleats out so that they would be at the top of the door and at the ceiling. So my piece of trim at the top of the door is a cleat as well. And I needed to make a little cutout for the door frame. Then once all the cleats are up, I put the trim around the soffit. And once all the trim was up, I put trim caulk around the trim as there were still little gaps between the panels and the trim. But that made it look really clean and really sharp. And once I had the trim and the trim caulk up, I could then paint the second coat on the trim. So we remember what this room used to look like. And at this point, everything above the floor, except maybe the baseboard, uh, is done. And I still have to do the cover plates on the electrical, but that'll, that'll be easy. And the, the, the big thing in the room is to paint the floor, and I'll do that next. Then, then the, the big project, or the sort of second half of the project, is building the things that will hang on the French cleat system. So I, I want to do a, a desk, I think, over here, and then we'll do a bunch of storage systems on the wall that can kind of go where, where they need to go. So that will be a, a soon-to-come-out future video. <laughs> Thanks for watching.